created? Uh, uh, I, I, I guess it probably uh, the, 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 the mansion, the vampire mansion from uh, second season. That's um, very cool. Yeah, the, you know, the second half of second season. Oh, come on. I like come the on. meat packing of the first half of the second. The meat packing, <laughs> Spike of Drusilla's, yeah. That um, was, I like the, one, the, the one that was uh, the church and the library and Adam's Lair and like 14,000. Well, yeah. We, I mean, we, <laughs> then you used it for the Okay, sewer. we built 200 sets, but you know, <laughs> we would take like one set and make yeah. it into 15 different sets. So, you know, if, you, if you're an avid watcher of the, of the show, you'll notice, you know, it's you'll see one time. set 15 different times, redressed and repainted. <laughs> It's just Rebuild. a different filter, and that's where Ray comes in. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Seriously, though, when it, when it comes out on DVD, a lot of people are going to appreciate the sets that you make because they're, they're so detailed. They're really on par with a feature where a feature has to be believable when it's blown up to this size, which means that it all has to look real w when you're walking through it. And a lot of times, a TV set doesn't look that real because it doesn't have to. It's so small and so fuzzy. But your stuff, I swear to God, even going down the back alley, everything that's just brand new, it's just so heavily textured. The other thing about the, the infamous musical was that a lot of the things I saw for the first time, partially because it does look different than any episode we've ever done, just, and, and this is actually about young Ray here, it's not just all with filters, but I've, you know, to be doing the show, um, you know, the person who's on set every single minute of every single working day is the DP. and. Um, Ray here, um, you know, in the middle of making a show that already has a very stylized and difficult look to make the musical, which looks unlike any episode we've done, but still looks like the show. Really, it, the way it showed off the actors and the sets, like, I wrote not just to their talents, but to the sets. I wrote uh, Nikki and Emma's song as a kind of 30s pastiche because of the look of that set being so deco and sort of also the way her costumes had been the year before. So that's why they got that particular number. And the way it's lit and the way it looks, um, it makes a huge impression. It's gorgeous. Uh, there, w there was a, the musical episode, which we were talking about. And th but then later this season, and that was very you know, fun, obviously. But the show took a very kind of a dark turn. Um, I mean, you know. Don't you think so? People, people said that. Was funny. <laughs> Why? Don't look at me like this. This is the first I've heard of this. <laughs> to, um, ex explain more. Dark and. Seriously, Marty and, and Joss, I mean, did, did, a lot of people kind of complained. They thought it had taken too dark of a turn. I mean, how, how do you guys respond to that? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> With the mic. With, with the mic. Okay, I'll talk into the mic. Um, <laughs> you probably could. He was saying, I liked it, mommy. <laughs> um, I, you know, I think it, it was so much a response to um, the, the relationship that Buffy found herself in with Spike really drove, from, to my mind, so much of the second half of the season and then, of course, the turn with Willow. And I don't know if we ever stopped to think that these storylines would <laughs> be going on at the same time. <laughs> um, you know, we, we did have a mission statement, which was like, they get out in the world, and it's really hard. Um, I don't think we understood exactly how disturbing we were going to get. And, um, uh, but that was sort of the idea. It was, it was to give them, get them to a really dark place, and particularly towards the end, Willow's character. But um, that's partially because there were things we wanted to explore that really were dark, um, and partially because um, it's nice to be able to give that to your actors, even though occasionally it, you can depress them to death. Um, you know, to be able to, I mean, I mean, come on, how about Dark Willow? She was so cool. <laughs> Why know, did I have to be so veiny? Yeah. <laughs> Well, I wanted to go with acne. It was, uh, you know. when, That's a when, kind of a perfect thing. I mean, um, we, Buffy grows up, so does everybody around her. And they, as everyone knows, you move out of mom's house and things get weird. You know? <laughs> so uh, the issues, I think that, that it was very wise to let Buffy graduate high school and become a young adult. And it would be silly to try to keep the issues, uh, first love, first kiss, boyfriend gets mean on you. 
It, it has to develop if it's going to be organic and be true to someone growing up. Which doesn't and necessarily mean that it always has to be as dark as it was this year. I mean, we had to sort of buy back the fact that Buffy had gone, had been dead and had been in heaven and that her experience on earth was going to be um, a real journey and a real struggle. But we definitely do aspire to, you know, make things a little less grim next season on <laughs> UPN. <laughs> Some of our characters don't want to die. Tune in. <laughs> <laughs> Allison, uh, when did you know that Willow was going to try to destroy the world? <laughs> um, oh gosh, well, when I was sitting at home watching it, <laughs> what the hell is she doing? <laughs> she can't By create the new memories. Month, we're just like, oh, I can't see it. Okay, what are my lines? Or, no. um, I, uh, yeah, it was... I've got black hair, why? <laughs> what happened? I had little, um, little just hints, I guess, but... Um, black hair being one of them. <laughs> yeah. And but then I, the contacts yeah, was, my makeup was the main hint. When my makeup call became like an hour earlier. I was like, wait a minute, what is this about? <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I, I guess I just sort of got the scripts and figured out that, oh, dear, it's getting worse. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we had long talks about this. I, I found out a lot through too. my boyfriend. Yes. You talked to my boyfriend more than you did. I like, found out through him that I was going to like go all of you. I knew the black, the book sucking thing. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> I knew, you hadn't I knew, sucked like, a book from time to time, <laughs> huh? I knew how my hair was going to get black and why. <laughs> but, um, but I didn't know about the whole destruction. Yeah. <laughs> Oopsie. The fling was cool. <laughs> yeah, man. I know a lot of chicks who were into that, actually. They like roaring for you. Do it again! I, yeah, it was great. Sorry. I was eating Chinese food when I saw that. <laughs> you know. I, haven't seen I stopped that. eating Chinese food after I saw that. <laughs> I just saw it in person. I haven't seen it on, but I, it was gooey. <laughs> and, and Nicholas, you saved the world at the end. <laughs> I gotta tell you, you know, not my first time. <laughs> and right now I'm in talks with, um, with Sharon. <laughs> it's weird, no, once you do it, I, I mean, these people think it's real, you know? I'm going to see Putin in Russia in a week. My book is filled right now, at least until we go back to work. I, you know, I'm gonna do some good work, people, okay? You're, you are gonna- The war is over, so says Nick Brendan. You're, there's a lot of people that you need to remind about your preschool experience together. <laughs> yeah, the, the, he'll tell and, Arafat and, about and, his crayon. And actually, and actually, you know, and the great part about that that whole little, I mean, monologue, cap monologue, whatever, was was the fact. And this and this is going to be a, a, a stroke on, on Joss Whedon in, in, in a very heterosexual way. <laughs> is that the fact that? Because um, when it was first written, that yellow crayon, the 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 crayon thing wasn't in there. And then I got the second script, and um, having that that crayon thing in there, just talking about you know like connecting on all these levels, was just as an actor, fan just fantastic. Because after I read it, I cried. And if I'm crying reading for the first time, you know, and then I have time to work with it, when when it affects an actor that way, and thank you very much for for doing that. When you see it as the character, stop. <laughs> Um, that's called talent, and that's called texture, and, 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 and any actor, like anyone who's, who's lucky to have what I have, and I am very lucky to be here right now, and then also to be saying the words and, and, and have someone like Joss Whedon in my life and having lines like that to say, um, it makes it a lot easier on you, and it was just, um, I mean, my whole, if I can, in a nutshell, break down last season, I'm going to say yellow crayola crayon because that's what it was, yeah, and it was awesome. Meanwhile, I went on the internet and someone was like, uh, you had a yellow crayon, that's how he stopped her? This show sucks! <laughs> and I was all like, no, it's true! And your yellow was my blue! I'm a hack, I saw. What do you know? Well, I think, um, you know, our writers, Marty and, and Joss, are really wonderful in that sense. They, they kind of, like Joss was saying about the musical, he catered it to each one of our individual, you know, needs and, and, and talents. Um, our writers are really 
listening to us. Um, they don't just write out of, you know, whatever they come up with, whatever they've dreamt. Well, they sometimes. Really <laughs> we don't like to talk about those episodes. Um, but it's, it's really amazing. I mean, I know I feel very comfortable. Um, and, and there's just what, what James was saying about character progression and, and the darkness and everything. I think it's vital for each character to go through um, a dark period in their life because that's what we go through in life. And for a show not to you know, or present that and express that is absolutely ludicrous because then it's not life. And I think Buffy's goal, it's, it's a metaphor. Yeah. You know, I have i was such a, a huge fan of the show before I joined and I read many of Joss's interviews and I was really amazed to find out, um, not, not amazed to find out, but I'm um, so interested to find out how the show was structured. It was, um, it was awesome and we're all really, really lucky. But the truth is anything we write for you guys, you can do. <laughs> and, and in fact, yeah, I mean, there's that. Sure. <laughs> there's that. But it's got to start somewhere. We're just being modest. <laughs> yeah, really. okay, oh, forget it. <laughs> they make up their own lines. They don't even care about us. They just make if we were on another show, we would know what was going to happen season to season pretty much. Someone Let's was going to get their heart that. broken, someone was going to kiss somebody. You can turn us into snails, man. <laughs> we turned Sarah into Buffy's a rat. Buffy's a rat, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're very nice. Because she was the <laughs> At the very end, wasn't Spike trying to get the chip out of his head? No. <laughs> but you were meant to believe that he was. Okay, all right. This is a thing that I personally have devised called a plot twist. <laughs> I think it's gonna catch on with the young people. Which actually, Joss bought the rights too, so whenever there's a plot twist, he gets paid. It was surprising. It was good. It was a good twist. Well, it uh, it will pay off. <laughs> oh, no, no. I'm not crazy. The show's not over yet, correct? What? 